Hello, I'm Dane, and this is Dane Explains. At the time of this video's release, a total solar eclipse is just a few days away in the United States. On April 8th, 2024. The next one visible from the continent of the United States won't occur again for another 20 years. In the same amount of time, there will be at least 16 total lunar eclipses visible from the continent of the United States. So, why are solar eclipses so rare, and lunar eclipses relatively common? Let me explain why. First off, why don't lunar and solar eclipses happen every month? The moon circles the Earth, so you'd think that every time the moon was full, which means it's opposite the sun, the Earth would cast a shadow on it. And that every time there's a new moon, when the moon was in between the Earth and the sun, we'd get a solar eclipse. This isn't the case because the orbit of the moon is inclined about 5 degrees. So, for it to get directly between the Earth and the Sun, or travel directly through the Earth's shadow, it has to be exactly in the right place at the right time. Where the Moon just happens to be passing the Earth's equator, or near to it, within a few hours of the full or new Moon. The last solar eclipse, whose path of totality was anywhere near where I live, happened when I was less than 10 years old. Even though the next solar eclipse in the United States, after the one on the 8th anyway, is another 20 years away. The next one that will pass through my area won't happen again until I'm 98. That's a long time. You keep using the word. I do not think it means what you think it means. So if you're someone who's near the path of totality, I recommend making the trip to see it. For many, a total eclipse is a once in a lifetime thing. Lunar eclipses? Not so much. I've seen several in the last decade, without even having to leave my yard. There are actually quite a few factors at play here. Of course, size is one of them. The Earth is much bigger than the Moon. That means the Earth has many more opportunities to get between the Sun and the Moon than the Moon does to get between the Earth and the Sun. However, if you look at it on this scale, you can see that both the Earth and the Moon are pretty tiny relative to the distances between them. So, this is actually a pretty small effect. One thing that does have a major effect, although not on the number of total eclipses, is the Earth's atmosphere. You may notice that during a lunar eclipse, the Moon often looks red. It looks red for the same reason sunsets are red here on Earth. The blue light from the sun is getting absorbed before it gets through the Earth's atmosphere, so the light that does get through appears red. And in case you're wondering, this is what a lunar eclipse would look like from the surface of the moon. This isn't an actual photo, but it's an image I created. One of the major effects that makes total solar eclipses so rare compared to lunar eclipses is the size of the shadow of the moon when cast on the Earth. Although the sun is completely obscured when you see a total solar eclipse, that doesn't mean the shadow of the moon cast on the Earth covers the whole Earth. It just covers a small area relative to the shadow the Earth casts on the moon, which easily obscures the sun from the moon and covers the whole moon during a total lunar eclipse. In fact, the moon is so small that sometimes we have what's called an annular eclipse, where it's too small to block the entire sun and a ring of the sun is still visible around the moon. This doesn't happen with lunar eclipses, although some light from the sun does usually get scattered around the Earth through Earth's atmosphere, like I mentioned before, giving the eclipse a ring of fire appearance from the moon. And although you'll have to rely on my rendition of a lunar eclipse as seen from the moon to get an idea of what that might look like, we know what a solar eclipse would look like from the moon because we can see the shadow the moon casts on the Earth from Earth orbit. So it would look like this from the moon, and it's actually kind of hard to notice as the moon's shadow would appear to just be a dark splotch on the Earth. But you'd be able to see it from anywhere on the near side of the moon. That's the biggest reason we see more lunar eclipses than solar eclipses. Because we're not on the moon. We're on the Earth. When the Earth casts a shadow on the moon, people on 50% of the surface area of the Earth can see it, assuming clear skies. As long as the sun is set, it's nighttime, and you're awake, you can see it. During a solar eclipse, you have to be in the shadow of the moon to see the eclipse at all, an issue that's exacerbated by the other issues I already mentioned. If you were on the moon looking back at Earth, lunar eclipses would be less common, and solar eclipses would be more common. Assuming you weren't on the far side of the moon anyway, there you would never see a lunar or solar eclipse because you can't see the Earth at all. The effects of a total solar eclipse on the sky, and even the animals, is quite fascinating. So, considering the rarity, if you get a chance to witness a total solar eclipse, don't pass it up. 
Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please press the like button. Subscribe to my channel and ding the bell to get notified when I post new videos. Also, please support me on Patreon to get extra content and special perks. Link in the description. The more people support me, the more time I can dedicate to making videos like this one. So, until next time, have a great week. Thank you.